Bonsoir et bienvenue dans le gros journal. Ce soir, on reçoit Night Shyamalan, sixième sens, incassable, le maître du film d'horreur pour une masterclass totalement inédite. C'est maintenant dans le gros journal. Welcome to le gros journal. Thank you for having me. First of all, I have to tell you something about this motherfucking movie called Split. <laughs> I have to wake up myself and give you a hug. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because I had. First, the movie is awesome. This is a motherfucking classic <laughs> of horror. You know, I'm, I'm, I never said that because I'm the kind of guy who were upset with the American movies. Like, <laughs> I, I was bored uh, about the fact to see Iron Man 22 versus <laughs> Spider-Man <laughs> Spider 23. What's up, guys? Wait a minute. You guys aren't the real Avengers. I can tell Hulk gives it away. Actually, it's very interesting that you, you said what you just said, because what, what causes them to get out and go to the movie theater, and it's being up, uh, you know, uh, taken over by Spider-Man 25 and Iron Man 73 and all of that. So I can't compete, nor do I want to compete, with the kind of storytelling excess of like bigger, 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 and CGI, CGI. So what is my weapon? What is the reason I can get people out of the, their homes and come to see? And that's with originality. Can we pitch split? So let me start and, you, you, and, you, and you complete, okay? Okay. So at the beginning of the movie, uh, there is a, a dad who is going to pick up some young ladies. And uh, uh, the dad is picking up some food for everybody. So they're going to the parking. And the dad is watching to somebody and the dad disappears. So there is a guy who could be like a graffiti artist who is going into the car. Hey, pardon me, sir. I think you have the wrong car. And they're going uh, into a cave, a mysterious cave, and the guy is opening the door. What the hell is going on? Is it a good pitch? <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty good. I was listening. I was very yeah. riveted. You want me to finish the pitch? Yeah. Then they hear him arguing with a woman outside the room and the woman's like, what did you do? And the girl starts screaming from the room, we're in here, we're in here. And she comes and she opens the door and the girls scream when they realize that there is no woman, that he's been talking to himself and he thinks he's a man and a woman and they realize they've been abducted by a man who thinks he's many personalities. And the movie is about these three girls trying to manipulate the personalities to get out before a final personality is supposed to come that's going to do very harm, big harm to them. The beast is real. Is that what you say to the producer to, to, to pitch your movie? Oh, to sell it? Yeah. Oh, I, How do you sell one of your movies? That w was the question I wanted to ask you. I don't really pitch my movies. So I, since I write the screenplay and I write them for free, basically. I write them and then I go here and I give them the screenplay and I say, I want to make this. So they have the whole movie to read. You know, there is a way to scare people uh -huh. and there is the obvious way, like the screams, and there is the other way. How did you decide to, to, to use this path? Spectacle is not where I come from. I, insinuation, keeping a story incomplete. Um, you know, telling a part of the story and then stopping it. You know, for me, like, I'm very excited to write a, a story about you, two, you, uh, you and I trapped here, right? It's an interview scene with, with this crew, and then we hear something, and we're trying to keep the interview going, but we hear another explosion, and everybody's starting to get worried, and the phones start buzzing, and, you know, I want, I love that thing, and then all the phones go dead. Now we're in a life and death, you know, what, what does that bring out in all this? That's awesome. Doesn't doesn't cost much money, you know. But I love that. I love writing from that. Can you do a scary shot just with my face? Because that that's your specialty. <laughs> I give you this camera, and oh my goodness, let's see. Well, oh wow, that is kind of scary. Um, I want you to think uh, about someone that that threatened you and what you would do to them. That kind of thing. Yeah. You still have a little smile, and you're not thinking the right thoughts. I can't. You're just too sweet. I can't. I can't, I can't, oh wait, that's not bad. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I used some of the orange back there to help yeah. you out a little bit. You know what I did when I was a young guy and awesome guy? Uh, I went to uh, a theater with a girl and to, to see The Sixth Sense. 
and I, I've already seen the movie, and okay. I've asked her for, the, for a date, and she said no. So at the begin, at the oh, beginning no. of the movie, I told her the That's the end. terrible. That's yeah. terrible. I'm going to have to leave now. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about your childhood? Yeah. Uh, you're born French in your passport. Yes. In Pondicherry. Pondicherry, India. Pondicherry. Yeah, my passport's all in French. Like. Then you came to the US. Yeah. Then you discover this book of Spike Lee, yeah. who was uh, saying how he did his first, his first movie without mm. money and without producing. First, I was kind of following that format of Spike, who was in his movies, wrote and directed his movies, you know, and did it independently. And Woody Allen, same thing, right? And the Coen brothers kind of write and directing those. That was the world, right? But I try. I learned to go. Okay, you're not Spike Lee. You're, you're not Woody Allen. Stop trying to be like anybody else. You're not doing that very well, you know? So what is it you're interested in? And I looked at my, I literally just sat there in my, house, in my room and I saw all the posters. I had Alien was up, The Exorcist was up, Die Hard was up. Um, That's what's up. Yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> and I had all these movies. And I said, all right, well, let me write one of those. Let me just write one. Let's stop trying to be um, something that you're not. And I, I wrote one of those and that was Sixth Sense. When you were watching Split, you you've influenced by the internet culture in the way to use typographies, to use mm. uh, uh, even in the cutscenes. Mm -hmm. you, you're very actual, you know, it's not from the past. Mm -hmm. uh, did this culture influence you? Are you always watching everything that uh, is going on on the internet? No. Creatively? Uh, no, what I did was, um, I'm going to attribute what you just said to the people that I'm working with. So. I'm intentionally hiring people that are doing their first movie, their second movie. And by hiring young, hungry, super talented people and bringing, bringing you know, a certain experience to the table, the balance is right. In, in Split, one of my favorite scenes is the scene about the Kanye West dancing. <laughs> yes. And why did you choose Kanye West? <laughs> well... What is it, the, the, does know, he represent for you? He represents... Um, I guess the pinnacle of our societal obsessions right now, right? Um, whoever is more outrageous gets the gets the attention. Whoever is, it de no longer is there an evaluation of you know meaning to to nonsense. It doesn't matter if they're outrageous and spectacle. And Kanye, who by the way I think is a musical genius, you put the camera on him and you never know what's going to happen. You never know what he's going to say. Same thing happened with Trump. We're we're I can't write stuff that would be equal to this. What's happening? Is the election of Trump uh, one of your worst scenario? Yeah, there was a lot of tweets as it was the election night was happening and the votes were coming in. Everyone, there was a lot of tweets of like, I hope this is an M. Night Shyamalan movie. I hope at the end something comes in. Um, I was, it was a very uh, upsetting night for all of us. You know, here a lot of people are talking about a divorce between the medias and the real people. Yes. And that the medias don't talk about what the real people think. So you had Trump. Mm -hmm. Are you agree with that? I don't know about that, but I know this. If you, my, yours and my job is a, we have a news, a news program that's based on ratings. My salary is based on how many people are watching me, right? And I have a candidate, let's say, that says, I want to improve healthcare, I want to do this, I want to do that. The ratings, no one's watching that. But if I, if I have a, a candidate that comes in and says, I'm going to build a wall around this entire place and I'm going to get rid of all these people. We will build a great wall along the southern border. That's fantastic TV. That's fantastic. That's why, you know, they keep him on. They get, they get better ratings. I mean, CNN's ratings are unbelievable right now. This is CNN Breaking News. Spectacle is, it, it shouldn't be valued when you have, the, when an organization is called a news program because it's contradictory because news sometimes is boring and some news is important still. It's important to say there's a worker who's disgruntled and, and they're losing their jobs and that's all I'm going to tell you the story. It doesn't have to be spectacle. I mean, we know so much more about Kanye and Trump than the people that are really doing the things in the United States, right? Because they're, they're not exciting. But do you still feel free in the U.S.? Yeah, man, a, we may, you know, It's look, a simple question, it, but, it, you know. It is, look, you can't, one person doesn't decide this in the United States. We, we all change it. We change it. We change the definition of what it means to be a U.S. citizen every single day, what it means to be in the United States. So I've been, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. 
I, my parents went there, they were immigrants, I'm an immigrant, and I got to live in this incredible city in Philadelphia, have the most incredible life, I got to do what I wanted, I had the dream. So if I want that country to be different, with different values, it's my responsibility to go do it. If you have uh, any problem of freedom in the US, you're the welcome in France. Thank you. If you want to make a TV show for uh, Canal+, Plus, <laughs> you can do it. Yeah, let's do it, I'm not joking. Yeah, I'm not joking too, I asked to Canal+, Plus, I asked to the people, and you're doing a show for Canal+. Plus. I would love to do one. You know. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. C'était le gros journal avec une légende du cinéma. On se retrouve demain à la même heure sur Canal+, la version très longue sur Click.tv et sur My Canal et bientôt la série de, de Monsieur sur Canal+. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, my man. Appelle-moi le gros.